Coincidence has played a big part in David Palmer's career, starting with his entry into the industry. It's actually funny, I never planned to be a geologist. And it, it was kind of a happy accident. Um, I was in university uh, kind of pursuing a different career path, and I just happened to get a summer job working with the Department of Mines in Nova Scotia. And it was, it was probably the worst job that you could get. It was, you know, essentially dirtbagging, and I loved it. Since graduating in geology from St. Francis Xavier University and obtaining a PhD in geology from McGill University, David has traveled the world, working in a number of commodities. I think there are a lot of qualities that have, have made him successful. First, he really understands uh, geology. Uh, I haven't met too many people that uh, have as great an understanding of the geology and the exploration. David's association with probe mines was also by chance. He was introduced after doing a favor for a geophysicist who was a partner with the founder of the company. They saw Probe as a very, you know, exploration-focused company, very technically focused, and, and, uh, and I think I, I kind of fit with that vision. Probe's Borden project wasn't intended to be a core asset. It was just something to work on during the winter when they couldn't access their Black Creek chromite project in the Ring of Fire. It fit the bill for what we were looking for, something that was easy access in difficult times of the year. The property was in an unlikely area, just one kilometer off Highway 101 near Chaplow, Ontario. You need to remember that the Kappas Casing structural zone was largely ignored by a lot of uh, producing mining companies. It's in high-grade metamorphic rocks, and most geologists look at high-grade metamorphic rocks and think, if there was a deposit there, it's probably been destroyed by those high-grade conditions. David believed a deposit could have been preserved rather than destroyed. He was right. So really what it is, understanding the mineralization is, is the first step. Um, I think what our strategy going forward is, is, is to, to look for this quartz vein system that's carrying the gold. When we first drilled into it, we, we were thinking it was a kind of a large bulk tonnage, low grade deposit. Probably about two years into the uh, delineation drilling, that was kind of the, the game-changing moment for the project. That's when we, we intersected a, a kind of a thick, high-grade zone. When we got the assays back, we couldn't believe it. They were, they were just continuous runs of gold in this, in this drilling. The discovery has resulted in a multi-million ounce resource. And it became clear very quickly that these guys were repeating um, the discovery success hole after hole. And it looked like they were building ounces very quickly. And so his technical competence, his intelligence, uh, his ability to see the potential where others hadn't uh, was something that I think was uh, a, a big factor in the success of, uh, of this exploration find. David has achieved this success despite the market conditions. And I think that kind of speaks to how he's been able to communicate his story, how well he understands his story. And the story is just beginning. The discovery has opened up what people believe could be a whole new gold district in Canada. So now, Dave, uh, Alang is our land package around the Border and Gold project. With the consolidated project, we're probably looking at about 780, 790 square kilometers. Largest project that, that Probe has actually ever had. Well, I think we've got the best of both worlds. I think we've got a project that looks like it's, it's going into development, as well as all that excitement, that, that exploration, blue sky potential to find another one. 